Let me ask you. Are you reading the Bible daily? Are you spending time with God uh, in your quiet time in prayer with God daily? Are you faithfully and consistently giving your tithes and offering as instructed by God in the Scripture, giving us a general principle of 10% at least from your monthly income? Are you readily and easily forgive others when they hurt you, when they do wrong to you? Have you gotten rid of your old sinful habits? Are you becoming more and more like Christ Jesus, your Lord and your Savior, in your thoughts, in your attitude, and in your actions towards others? Hmm. Are you living a victorious life against the temptations that come your way because of your flesh or because of the things around the world? Are you? If we are all truly honest to ourselves, I think the answer to all these questions would lean more towards no. I think the answer to these old questions would be most likely no for all of us, if not most of us. So that begs the question for us today, this morning, and that is this. Why? How come? Why is that the case? Why is that the case when we are already saved by Christ? Why is that the case when we are already, the Bible says we are what? A new? New? Creation. Why is that the case? Why is that the case when God's word clearly tells us that sin in our lives has no power at all. Because God's word in Romans chapter 6, verse 6 tells us this. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might, look at this, lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Sin has no more power over us, that means to say that you and I cannot say, oh, what to do? I am a human being, you know, what to do? I have no control over my sinful desire. So, how do you say in Chinese? Bopiena. Uh, Bopiena, just do it, Lord, what to do? It's temptation very strong, you know, wow, flesh very weak, you know. Ah, the, 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 what is that? The spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. La haya, what to do, lo? He, he. Romans 6, 6 says, no le. You've got power, the power of sin in your lives to control your life. Broken already. Then, of course, then, how come? How come it seems, it appears, that many of us are still living a defeated life in many areas of our lives. It's as if, like although we are delivered from the penalty of sin, yet we live a defeated life with sin. You know what I mean? It's like, hallelujah, salvation guaranteed. We are new in Christ. Yet, when we look at our lives, our daily lives, we live a defeated life with sin. Now, 
that may seem to be the reality for many of us. But listen, I stand here today to tell you something, and that is this. That you are not just delivered from the penalty of sin, but you are destined to overcome. You are not just delivered from the penalty of sin, from the condemnation of sin, but you are destined to overcome the power of sin in your life and to be transformed in your thoughts, in your attitudes, in your character, in your personalities, in your actions, in your behaviors, in the way you live, in the way you relate with others, in the way you relate with the world. You and I, we are destined to overcome and transform. Now, if you believe that, I want to hear a big amen to that. Amen? That's right. I'm glad I'm speaking to people who believe that. <laughs> All right. If not, I think we just say amen and then we just, you know, I just pray and then we just go home. You are destined to overcome and transform. Then the question is, how do we experience that? How do we experience the reality, the truth that we are destined to overcome and transform? Because the reality seems to be something else, right? The reality seems to be like we are living a defeated life. Do you know that even the Apostle Paul, now you know Apostle Paul, oh, the guru among the gurus of Christian, you know, a, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, right? Even the guru of gurus in, in, in terms of followers of Jesus, even the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest apostles of Jesus Christ, struggled with this reality. Do you know that? Oh, let me show you if you don't believe me. It's in Romans chapter 7. These are the words of the apostle, the undisputed apostle of Jesus Christ. He said this, I don't really understand myself. Like, what? I thought you were the greatest theologian, you were the greatest follower. He says, because I want to do what is right, but I end up not doing it. Instead, I, well, I do what I actually hate. I, I, I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but in the end, I end up doing it anyway. It's like, we know. It's like Paul is saying, like, I know what is good. And so the problem is not that I don't know what is good, I don't know what is bad. That is not the problem. The problem is I just can't do it. It seems that I don't have the power to do what is good. How come? Why are we like that? It's not just Paul, but I believe we can resonate, we can relate with this. It's not just with Paul, it's with us. What is the problem. What, what is the root cause? Let me tell you the root cause. It is called the human heart. Mm -hmm. The human heart. You know why? Because God's word again in Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Oh boy. Who really knows how bad it is? The only way we can describe and, and say it is to use the word this most deceitful and desperately wicked. But oh, to what extent? Oh, who can know it? It is the human heart. You see, my brothers, sisters, my friends, <clears throat> my younger sister back in my hometown, all right, my younger sister back in my hometown is having a relationship problem uh, in this season of her life. And uh, I have been a distant counselor for the past two months. And oh, it's very tiring, you know, you counsel a person over the phone, and every time over the phone, you spend talking for three hours. It's like, oh, you know, it's like you, you, you can just imagine how drained you can be. So she's having a relationship problem, and um, it's been two months that we have been struggling and wrestling with her. Uh, the thing is this, 
she has been dating this guy for over three years. And of course, they are pretty much serious in their relationship. But recently, uh, she began to realize that uh, it might not be good for her to continue on with this relationship because the guy started to abuse her uh, in, in, in different ways. So she herself was shocked. And so she decided to break it off, to break up the relationship. And so we were like, okay, that's, yes, that should be the way, you know. But then the next moment, after a week or so, she continues on. She just cannot let go. And so I was confused. My parents were confused. My brother was confused. And then I asked, in, you know, just, just um, last week, I, I asked, why? What's happening? And this is exactly what she said to me. And these are her words. She said this, Ata. Ata means in my mother tongue. Elder brother, my heart cannot let go. I know this is not good. I know if I enter and, uh, because they were, they were thinking of getting married, you see. I know if I get married, I will be in trouble. I will regret for the whole, the entire life. But my heart cannot let go. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's what it means, that the heart is most deceitful. That is the root cause of why we know what is good, what is bad. We know what God wants us to do, but in the end, like the Apostle Paul we end up not doing it. We actually end up doing contrary to that. And the root cause is because our heart, our heart is unstable. Our heart always lean towards that is contrary to God. You may be thinking, you should be thinking, why? Why like that? Huh? Why our heart? Why? Well, the Bible, God's word explains to us and this one is, I'm not just talking about Christian, but any, as long as you are a human being, not an animal, as long as you are a human being, this is true for the entire human race. As long as you are a human being. The Bible, God's word explains to us because we disobey, because we sinned against God, our nature has been tainted. We became fallen nature, and that's why our heart became most deceitful. So then, of course, the question is, what is the solution? Right? How do we go about? How do we live? Now, I, I want you to pay attention to this very carefully, because this is actually the main part, main teaching for today. So please... Pay attention. And I want to show you this. The solution is this. The solution to the human heart problem is the Holy Spirit. Keep that for now and watch this. While Jesus Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin. What does this mean? Let me explain to you. It means... What Jesus Christ did on the cross. What did he do on the cross? He died, right? But we know he didn't die for his sin. He died on behalf of your sin and my sin for the entire human race. So what Jesus did on the cross, and if we believe in what he has done on the cross, then the penalty of sin, the, ju the, 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 the judgment, the condemnation that God brings to us because we sinned against God, our creator God. And then we owe him our guilt, our judgment, our condemnation. When we believe in Jesus for what he has done, our condemnation, our penalty of sin, the wages of sin is canceled. 
So Christ delivers us from the penalty, from the condemnation of sin. You know how I know? Well, this is what uh, Romans 8, 1 says, remember? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you believe in Jesus and what he has done on the cross, then you will, you are, you are free. You will not be condemned anymore. Now, if you believe in this, that Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin, if you just believe this and live your life, I can tell you your salvation is guaranteed. If you just believe that, yes, Jesus Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin, from the condemnation of sin, you, your salvation can be guaranteed. You do not have to worry. That when you die from this world, you will rise again and you will live eternity with Jesus. Salvation guaranteed. Chop. But here's the thing. While your salvation may be guaranteed, you may not be able to live a life, a victorious life over sin. You may be guaranteed with the salvation for eternity, but you may not be able to live the life, the new creation life that God promised to us. Why? Here's the reason. Watch this carefully. The reason is because of this. Because while Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin, watch this, it is through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that we find deliverance from the control, from the ongoing control and influence of sin in our lives. We must understand this. The second person in the Trinity, Jesus Christ, He, because of what He has done on the cross, He delivers us from the penalty of sin. We are no more condemned anymore. We receive salvation. And hallelujah, ticket to heaven, guaranteed. But if we do not believe and if we do not understand the second part, the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is given to us. For what? Just to have fun. Huh? Just to make sure, oh, you are safe. Like, okay, good. Like, all. No, the Holy Spirit is given to us. You read the Gospel of John. It is very clear. Jesus tells us why the Holy Spirit is given to us. It is to help us. Help us in what? Help us to live the life that God calls us to live. Live in obedience to God. So while Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin, it is the Holy Spirit that will deliver us from the ongoing struggle, battle of the heart. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to live the new creation life. There is no way, brothers, sisters, there is no way to live a life of obedience with the, without the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no way for us to overcome the power of sin without the power of the Holy Spirit. Now in Romans, it says that Christ, because of what Christ has done, you are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. The penalty of sin has been canceled. But it is also said that it is not just the penalty of sin, but the power of sin in your life has been broken. The question is, how? It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in us to break the power of sin over our lives because until and unless you die, I die, the power of sin will continue to tempt us. Why? Because even though we are saved, we are still in our human flesh. Our nature is still the same, broken, fallen nature. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That is His work in our lives. In other words, Christ sets us free from the condemnation of sin while the Holy Spirit sets us free from the control of sin. How do we know that? Well, again, 
from God's word in Romans 8, 13, it says like this. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit's power, the Holy Spirit's power, you can put to death the sins you commit. And then you will live. Live the life that God calls you to live. You can put an end to the power of sin. That means you can stop your deceitful heart from influencing you to end up doing the wrong things, to end up choosing the wrong thing. In fact, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 makes it even clearer. Here's what it says. Walk by the Holy Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of your Flesh. I like this. Walk by the Holy Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. Desires of your flesh? What does that mean? Desires of the flesh? If you, if you keep reading uh, uh, from verse 16 down onwards, you will find what the desires of the flesh are. But let me just quickly read for you. It says like this. Now, the, the desires of the flesh are this. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostilities, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, uh, disobedience, and like these things. That means there are many others. These are the desires of the flesh that are against the will of God for our lives. So the solution is to walk by the Holy Spirit. The heart is the root cause that makes us give in to the power of sin in our lives. The solution is to walk by the Holy Spirit. And to walk by the Holy Spirit means to live a life under the influence and power of the Holy Spirit. It's as if like when we drink alcohol. Right? For those of you who love to drink occasionally. When you drink alcohol and you drink more than actually is good for your body, what happens? Your entire body is influenced and controlled by the alcohol. Not the Holy Spirit, the other spirit. The other spirit. <laughs> wow, you are comparing the, uh, the alcohol and Holy Spirit. That's a good analogy. But of course, the alcohol one... Uh, controls you and makes you do, let you do funny things like, huh? I am the king of the world, you know, when I'm drunk, you know. And likewise, when we are drunk, drunk with the Holy Spirit, no matter what comes, we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And people will say, hey, you are crazy. Yes, because I'm drunk with the Holy Spirit. Huh? Well, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> okay, so, well, I, I don't know. Walking by the Holy Spirit, if that helps, okay? It's being influenced, it's being controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is the reason the Holy Spirit is given to us. Do you know, actually, Paul says in, in, in one of the passages, remember, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, Walk by the Holy Spirit, and then you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. Well, the implication is that if we do not walk or live our lives through the Holy Spirit, we may be delivered from the penalty of sin, from the condemnation of sin, but we may never live, but we may continue to live a defeated life from the power of sin. In other words, my brothers and sisters, you may live a Christian life positionally. But you may never experience the Christian life practically. You know what that means? You may live a Christian life positionally. That means, oh yes, I'm, I'm a Christian and I'm safe. Hoo-hoo. Yay, yay. But you may never experience the Christian life practically. It means the benefits the change, the transformation that actually God wants to bring in our lives. We may never experience that. I don't know, have you seen any Christian? When you <laughs> get to know that they are Christian, you are like utterly shocked. A Christian? Ah? Oh, so, no, no, I, I mean, I, and why, why are you shocked? Not in a good way, it's because of, Allah, 
the way he speaks, the way he behaves, you know, dishonest, no integrity. I know he's Christian. Alamak, I better not say I'm also Christian because if not, all my colleagues will also go, you know, oh, you Christians are like that, you know? Right? And that's what it means. You may be Christian positionally, certificate for baptized that year, this year. Yes, I'm a Christian. I go to church. My church is Shalom Baptist Chapel. Right? But then in, ch- uh, in, in your workplace, uh, huh, you're Christian. Uh? Oh, sorry, you know. Oh. Practically, we don't experience. In other words, you may experience the pardon of God, but you may never experience the power of God. You know what I mean? And don't you think that many of us, we are living like this. We have experienced the pardon of God. But we have never or rarely experienced the power of God in our life. Why? Why like that? Because when I read the Bible, this is not how it's supposed to be. If it is just to receive the pardon of God, then... God might as well make it a plan such that the moment you believe in Jesus, the moment you get the salvation, I let you die. Could I not? But God saves us not just to bring us to heaven. God saves us so that the, 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 the days that you're going to live, you're going to live experiencing the power of God. You are not just delivered. You are destined to overcome and transform. So, let me end by doing this. I want you to think of an area in your life that you really need the power of God. What is one area in your life that you really need the power of God? I don't know, but it could be a specific sin that you are still struggling and unable to overcome. A sin that only you know and God knows. Is there any specific sin that you are still struggling You are not able to overcome because you are destined to overcome. You are destined to be transformed. Because Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin. Christ gives us the pardon. But the Holy Spirit gives us the power of God. So is there a specific sin that you are unable to overcome? What is it? Or it could be a specific area of disobedience to God. God has already revealed His will for you in specific area of your life. But you just, like my sister, I know, but my heart cannot let go. I know I need to do this. I know I need to spend time with God daily. I need to read Bible. I need to do this. I need to pray. But my heart just cannot bring me to that place. I just can't. Do you need power? It could be a specific area of fear, perhaps, or doubt in your life. Fear about life, fear or doubt about God, doubt about your situation that you are unable to overcome or resolve. Or perhaps for some of you, it could be an area It could be a negative part of your personality or your character that is affecting your relationship with others. Do you know, have you come across Christians who, who, whenever they talk about themselves, they always slap themselves? I mean, not literally, but there are some who slap themselves, you know, because they really hate themselves. Have you seen anyone? Well, you are all very blessed people. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I mean, yeah, slap or rather beat themselves up means like, like, I'm the lousiest Christian in the entire universe. You know? <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> you know, but it's like you beat yourself up. It's like I, I can never do it. I can never. I can never. So it could be. It could be that a negative part of your personality, your character, or it could be for some of you, 
some kind of bitterness or unforgiveness that you are wrestling with. And because of something that happened, you are so bitter, or something that happened and you are unable to forgive, and because you are keeping all this with you, it's poisoning your soul. So I want you to think, what, what is it? What is one area in this season of your life that you really need the power of God? That you really need the Holy Spirit to deliver you from the ongoing control and influence in your life, in that specific area of your life. What is that specific area in your life that is ongoing and that you seems that is out of control? You think that, you know, today is done, but you realize that tomorrow it comes back and you are just not able to overcome it. What is that one area? I want you to think because we are going to do something with that. And I'm assuming that you have an area, specific area, and I'm assuming that you want to overcome. I won't be surprised if there is anyone you have given up and you say, I don't care. But if I, might, if I may encourage you, brother, sister, don't give up. Give up for what? Pardon me for my language, but are you stupid to give up? Why give up? Give up for what? Why? You're disappointed with God? Of course. It's part and parcel of our faith journey. Remember the message? We all get disappointed. We will get disappointed with God if we only believe that God is all-powerful, all-loving, but we fail to trust in His wisdom. God dispenses his love, his power, according to his wisdom. And sometimes his wisdom is not according to how we human beings logically think it should be. I'm assuming that there are areas you want to really overcome. You want to really not just receive the pardon of God, but you want to experience the power of God. And it is the Holy Spirit that is given to us that can deliver us from this ongoing power and control and influence in our life. In other words, what I'm saying is this, brother, sister, if there are specific areas that you are not receiving the power to overcome, that is not the way. You, you, you need not live that way. That is not the design that God wants us to. But we will always live that way if we do not understand this dynamic, this truth, that Christ is the one who delivers us from the penalty of sin. But it is the Holy Spirit that delivers us from the ongoing power, influence of sin in our life. So I want you to just close your eyes with me right now. Would you just close your eyes wherever you are? And as I asked you, one specific area that you have where you need the power of God, I want you to think of that again. Now, for those of you who have that specific area in your life that you need the power of God, you have at least one area that you can identify. Our eyes will remain closed, but if you already have that one area, I want us to pray together, but I want us to do it in a symbolic way. So I would invite you to stand for those of you 
who has identified one specific area that you need the power of God. If you have identified, would you just slowly stand from where you are? Eyes remain closed and just stand with me and we will pray together. Anyone else? Any specific area that God is bringing you to your mind and you want the power of God? I invite you to stand with me and we will pray. Let's keep our eyes closed and I want to just lead you to pray. And for those of you especially who are standing, I invite you to pray in your heart right now. And I want you to pray a very simple prayer. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Pray to the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Why pray to the Holy Spirit? Because it is the Holy Spirit that will deliver us from the power, from the control, from the influence of sin. So right now, in your heart, would you say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I bring, and then you mention whatever that area in your life that you want to receive the power so that you can overcome. Say it to that, and then ask the Holy Spirit, I want your power. I need your power. Fill me with your power. Holy Spirit, help me. I want you to now start praying in your heart. Keep crying out for him. Keep, if you are desperate enough, you will be praying. You will be just saying, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, give me the power right now. And as you pray, I will be praying that you will receive that power and you will feel it in your heart right now. So come. For those of you who are standing, bring that specific area and start praying to the Holy Spirit in your heart. Come, would you pray? Would you pray? Come, Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for my brother here. I pray for my sister there. Pray for my sister there. Brother, a brother there. Another brother here. A brother here. A brother there. A sister here. Sister there. Sister over there. Sister over there. Sister over there. Sister over there. Brother and brother. Brother, brother. Sister, brother. Sister, brother, and brother. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you please again, once again, once again, show yourself to them. Jesus, you said in your word, I will manifest myself to you. Jesus, I pray, through your Holy Spirit, will you manifest yourself in power to these brothers and sisters who are desperate, because if they are not desperate, they will not stand, oh Lord. But I know they are desperate and they are tired of whatever that area is right now. So Holy Spirit, we know that, Lord, you have only not given us the power to, to, to be broken in terms of our penalty of sin, but Lord, you have also given us the power to be free from the power of sin. 
and to be free from the bondage of those sin that is holding us back, that is making us doubt your power, that is making us doubt of who you are, what you say in your word. But Lord, right now, today will be the end of that. And I pray by faith, all my brothers and sisters, Lord, as they stand before you and say, Lord, that they desire to want to see. And I know, Lord, some of them may be, Lord, standing up with even some doubts and even, Lord, wondering if this one will work at all. Holy Spirit, be merciful upon them and show your mercy and show your power in their lives. And starting from today, I pray in the name of Jesus that that thing that, Lord, they are standing for before your presence, that, Lord, you will not take it lightly. But beginning from today, they will experience some kind of power, some kind of manifestation in their lives that they will come to know. It is because I stood and I asked the Holy Spirit and I'm desperate and He has honored me. I pray that, Lord, You will show Your power so that, Lord, they will come to know that indeed, Lord, You are true. That indeed, Lord, we are saved not just to be guaranteed in our salvation, but, Lord, You have saved us so that we can experience Your power that we are destined to overcome. We are destined to be transformed into a new person like Christ. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, right now, Holy Spirit, come and fill their hearts, fill their minds with that warm feeling and with that power in their bones right now. In Jesus' name, fall afresh. Fill them right now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to tell you, take the next five days, Monday to Monday, 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 Monday to Friday, five days. I was thinking Monday, Monday to Friday. Is it five days or six days? <laughs> okay, Monday to Friday is five days. Okay, five days, five days. Try me, try me. Five days, five days. Every day you wake up Five days, five days, just five days, okay? Wake up. I tell you, it will only take a few seconds. I know you all are busy people. Pray this prayer. When you pray, pray with faith. With all the doubts, fine, ne never mind, but with faith as well. Do you know faith and doubt always go together? Ah, you know that. Okay, so just, just pray. Pray this prayer. Holy Spirit, please help me. And when you say that, you are referring to the area that you have stood up right here. That one I don't know, but he knows. So just say, Holy Spirit, today, please help me to overcome that. Help me with regards to that. Help me. Help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. That's it. Five days, I challenge you to do that. Um, well, I'm not saying that I experienced that power, therefore you will experience that power. God works in different ways, okay? But that was what I experienced last year. No, not, not last year, sorry. Two years ago, two years, three years ago, when I had my burnout, you know, I was like, boom, you know, I don't want to pray, I don't want to preach, I don't want to see any one of you at that time, you know. And then I was like, Holy Spirit, the only prayer I could utter from my mouth was, Holy Spirit, please help me. And I received that power. And I'm, I'm, I'm praying that you will, you will somehow see that power this week. Monday to Friday, do that. And then come here on Saturday for Encounter Weekend. Nine to four. Nine a.m. to four p.m. If you come, I can guarantee you, you will not regret. If you don't come, oh, that one, very hard to say whether you will not regret or not, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Because, because you will miss something. Because we are trusting God as Pastor Yi Singh has said, that 9 to 4 p.m. Saturday, this Saturday, will be a sanctified time in this entire space. We're going to experience, we're going to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and encounter us. So Monday to Friday, you pray with regards to that area and come Saturday here. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And extend your time asking the Holy Spirit with regards to that. And it will be a guided time 
of really experiencing and encountering God. So go and open the documents and look at the program and the preparation that you are supposed to do. Then you will see and you will know what I'm talking about. So the Lord bless you. And right now, I want to lead us in this song. I, I like to do this, okay? Sorry to Glenda, you know, because I'm going to take her guitar and I'm going to play, all right? And so I'm going to ask, inv uh, invite uh, David to come up and...